traders what is going on welcome back now today's topic is really really important one of the things that i find a lot of traders are able to do is understand the basics of technical analysis that means identifying support and resistance levels marking key levels finding supply and demand levels are they all the same well i guess so then they're also able to identify pin bars wick rejections engulfing candles and decision candles are they all the same i guess so but one thing they don't know how to do is bring them all together now if technical analysis was as easy as it sounds by simply identifying your key levels and looking for wick rejections or engulfing candles then i'm sure the majority of traders will do a lot better and get better results one thing that i have found that has exponentially and drastically and hugely tra uh, changed my trading is being able to understand the market's behavior. Not just with structure, but also in singular candles. And I've seen a lot of success with a lot of my students because they're able to do this also. What I'm gonna do today is go over three examples on CAD Yen, Euro Pound, and New Zealand Dollar Swiss Franc with three market structures we're going to break them down and we're going to identify how to get into the trades that we have. I do hope you enjoy this and, you know, take notes as you're going along. If you need to rewatch it, please do. And I might as well ask you now while I'm here, if you're enjoying the content, just take two seconds to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and turn on those notifications. Let's head over and look at those examples. So the first example we're going to take a look at is on CAD JPY. Now, I just want you to stop for a second and look at the structure on this market. Now, I've dropped in some key levels, um, some major highs, some major lows. I've got the trend line in there so you can identify the structure of the market. And I want you to see if you can dissect what is happening before I do. Think about what we're looking for now and the reason why we would be looking for what we're looking for. Because as I said, you can come to the markets and it's very easy just to plot in a level here, plot in a level here, plot in a level here, plot in a level here. And you just say to yourself, well, if the market comes back here or here or here, I'll just look for any uh, wick rejection or engulfing candles to take the trade. But it's not that easy. So let's go over the first example. This is on the 4H time frame. Now you can use this on singular time frame trading, which I'm a bit big advocate of, or you can use this for multiple time frame uh, analysis so you can scale down to get tighter entries. It's really down to you. But for these three examples, we're gonna be focusing on just one time frame at a time. So the first thing that we need to identify here is the structure of this market had recently broke above a structural high, as you can see here. Now, once price breaks above a structural high, this is indicating strong bullish sentiment in the market. Now, it doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to get into this trade because at this moment in time, the market was ranging. While the market is ranging, you're waiting for price to break out a retail structure. You cannot anticipate the breakout. Now, it does take some experience to identify why you would take a buy as opposed to a sell on a breakout, but that's not the whole point of this video. We're going to be focusing on market behavior. So price is failing to break above. We finally have the breakout here. Now, with a breakout to the upside, what we're anticipating the market to do is continue in a bullish trend. Now, a bullish trend forms higher highs and higher lows. So at that stage, once we start to identify the market creating a key level, we're anticipating the market to create the higher low that will eventually make the new higher high. Now, we can clearly see that the market did not make the new higher high. In actual fact, it did create a double bottom pattern and attempted to push higher, but as you can clearly see here, it failed. Now, on failing to make the new higher high, we then enter another range. The process of taking a trade when, it, when there's a range is we'll wait for the market to break out and retest structure again. It can break up to the upside or to the downside because the current behavior of this market is illustrating to us that there's no bullish or no um, overall bullish or bearish sentiment in the market. Rather, there's just a battle between bulls and bears and we're just moving sideways. In other words, there's not enough buyers or there's not enough sellers. So we're waiting for the breakout. We have a breakout to the downside and once price breaks and leaves this level, what we're waiting for the market to do is come back and look for a sell. Now the simple um, behavior of the market now has highlighted to us that we can look for a sell because 
we were in an uptrend, we created a higher low that failed and we have a range that we're waiting for the breakout and retest to look for a continuation. So here's a trading opportunity just based on simple market behavior analysis. Then you link those to patterns and processes that you know you trade as part of your strategy, which could be pin bars, engulfing candles, wick rejections, uh, you name it, whatever you want to look for, dojis, indecisions, whatever. So the market continues down. So now we're looking for sells only because that's the behavior of the market at this moment in time. When the market is in a push phase, we expect it to pull back. And what do we expect the market to do? Well, we expect the market to create a potential retest of structure once creating a lower high level, or we expect the market to create a lower high and then a lower low. Now, the lower low was formed, but it wasn't major. So what we're looking for here now is price to either pull back to a key level where the lower, uh, lower high made the lower low, look for the retest and look for a selling opportunity, or we're simply waiting for the market to break close below structure and look for a retest of the, hit of the structure here. You could take a trade here, it's completely fine. You don't wanna be taking trades here. You wanna see a retest of structure or you wanna see more evidence uh, of wick rejections or indecision candles to confirm that this level is strong. So we have a trade here, we have a potential trade here. Now we have a break below. Once we have a lower low on the market, what are we expecting the market to do? We're expecting the market to create a new lower high and then continue down to make a new lower low. As you can clearly see with this example, price failed to make a new lower low, price failed to make new highs, and what do we enter again? We enter a range. The behavior of this market is neither indicating to us that the bulls are involved or the bears are involved, and there's just a tug of war. So at this stage, we're just waiting patiently for the market to do the same thing as we was waiting for up here. We'll wait for the market to break above, retest, continue higher, or break below, retest, continue lower. We can see in this instance, again, the market broke out, didn't create a retest, but on the way up, it started to react from the level to the left. The question is this, can you take sales at this level? Based on the behavior of the market being sell bias, making a new lower low, a new lower high, failing to make a new lower low, which is a depletion of bears in the market, a breakout of structure and a consolidation indicating bulls are stepping into the market and a strong momentum shift up with the sentiment of bulls in the market, should you be selling this level? The answer is no. Even though it's come back to a key level, you cannot sell it because the sentiment is bullish and the behavior is bullish. So you must wait patiently for price to respect the level that it's created or wait for a new lower high. So at this moment in time, we avoid the sales here, very patiently waiting for the market to talk to us because we're still looking for this continuation of this bullish sentiment because that's the behavior at this moment in time. Once we see price breaking above this structure, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for a tradable opportunity. We're looking for price to pull back, retest structure and look for a trade. In this instance, we have a trade here that we could take. You could take as an instant execution, a break of these structural highs or whatever else it is. Regardless of the results, that's a perfectly good buy. Now, if price starts to break below the higher low, this is now indicating to us a bearish sentiment because the bulls were involved. If the market was gonna continue up, we would have made a new higher high, but in actual fact, we failed and made a new low. So we're looking for the market to pull back, retest this structure, and look for evidence to see this market continue back down, part of a potential new downtrend. Now, if the market fails to make a new low, that's now showing to us that there's a depletion in bearish sentiment. And again, patiently, we are just waiting for the market to break above structural highs, come back to retest structure and look for buying opportunities. Now, if you don't want to take a buy after the retest and you want to wait for the major high to be broken, then that's an even better plan because now you start to build evidence of price making higher highs and higher lows strong bullish sentiment in the market and you wait patient for the market to pull back to a key level to retest that level and now we know we can look for buyers very convincingly we have a very strong bullish candle here strong wick indicating bearish sentiment and then we can go for our trade in this instance it's down to you what you go for one to two one to three i really don't care um, use your strategy and uh, your risk management plan to make a decision how you take this trade but there you go now, the trade won. Did Rox pick out another winning trade? He absolutely did. But did you catch the point? 
we read the behavior of the market all the way down until we decided we wanted to take a trade. There were many other opportunities we could have taken trades and if we did, we would have won, let's say one, two, one, two, lost one, one, three, one, four. There you go, do the math yourself. That's example number one. Here's Euro pound, example number two. Just very quick analysis here. The market's pushing to the downside. We can see that it's breaking key levels of the market where it's failing to break for a long period of time. We're looking for the market to now create sell by structure. The way we need to view structure is we need to see price create a lower high. Once price creates a lower high, then we anticipate the market to eventually make a new lower low. Now we can see the market started to trend down, creating new lower low and lower high structures here. But unfortunately, the overall structure did not create a new lower low. That being said, we now need to identify price staying below this level for continued sales and then look for patterns to support that, that will either be clean double tops, lower highs, break of previous structures, retests and continuations. The question I want you to think about now is did that ever happen? We're not changing our bias because we're still sell bias. We're looking for our patterns and our processes or we're looking for price to break the lows, retest and continue down. If that never happened, you're not supposed to trade but there's a sign here now if this structure this lower high is violated and price is not creating patterns that we can trade or breaking lows or creating breaking retests and then starts to break close above structure that is now indicating to us what the bears must be depleting and the bulls must be stepping into the market that being said once we have a clear break of structure we can identify the market as creating a structural low, higher low, higher low, and a new high. Now we are looking for buys only. We're always waiting for price to break out of structure, retest, look for evidence and confirmations to take a trade. We have a strong bullish candle here to the upside, and we can jump into the markets. The reason why we can take this trade is because we have all the confluences on our side, sell by structure, failing to create patterns or break and retest price breaking through the major low high level indicating continued bullish sentiment a retest with bullish behavior and then we can enter the trade very simple process yes another winning trade but if you understand the behavior it makes so much sense as to why we're buying this let's look at our third example new zealand dollar swiss franc a very simple example here the market was trending up for the first time in a very long time, price violated the brick wall. Once price violates the brick wall, we're anticipating price to make a lower high, and then eventually we're looking for the market to create a lower low. As you can see here, the market came back, creating a double top of this pattern, and then eventually creating the lower low. Once the market makes a lower low, what do we anticipate? The market to pull back, and then eventually make a new lower low. The market did that. Now the sentiment of this market is not clearly trending down, but there's a lot to support why sell bias would be the best option at this moment in time. If we don't look at it as sell bias, then what we look at it as is the market is now ranging. The minute we have a tap at the top, or two taps at the top, and two taps at the bottom, we can say we're ranging. Now we never got the second tap here because price obliterated this structural low. This behavior is off of the back of this brick wall being broken for the first time. So what we can look for here is a retest of this structure for a potential continuation down. Did that ever happen? No. Bulls came back in, broke back into structure. Now we're back in the range. So we're neither looking for sells or buys. We're just waiting patiently for the market to break the highs and look for a retest or break the lows and look for a retest. What happened? Well, the market eventually violated this structural high, creating a strong break close above, a really nice pullback and a retest of this structure and based on the behavior of this structure here on New Zealand dollar Swiss franc, we can safely say that buyers will be our best option because we have our patterns, we have our processes, we also have the confluences that we need to enter this trade and the behavior to support that. So we enter the trade, and as you probably can see here, Bob is your uncle. So take a look back at those three examples, go through this again, Understand how we're breaking down the behavior of the market first, supporting that with 
evidence and then finding the confluence. So I hope you enjoyed that video family and uh, yeah all I can say to you is just keep striving to do your best. I personally would say put in a good amount of hours, go over 100 trades, back test a few charts, see if you can read the market's behavior and really understand it. Once you can do that and you can add your patterns, your processes, your evidence and your confirmation to your ability or with your ability to read market structure, I'm telling you it's going to be a game changer. You're not going to win them all, but you don't need to win them all. 30%, 40%, 50% right, and you are laughing all the way to the bank. Just manage your risk and just trust the process. Anyway, until next time, family, continue to trust the process.